One of the cast offs I use very, very frequently is the loop through a loop cast off. I like this cast off because it most resembles a hand knitting cast off. It has a neat, tidy, sturdy chain edge on it. Now to do this cast off, you must loosen the tension by at least four numbers, loosen it as much as you can before the final row, and you can loosen a little more by just pulling down the upper tension unit to take some of the tension off the yarn as it feeds. Then knit a very loose final row. The stitches should be obviously looser than the rows below. And you can go ahead and cut the yarn. For the cast off, I bring all of the needles out into hold position. That puts the stitches behind the latches. Then I take the latch tool and hook the first stitch away from the yarn end. So my yarn end is over here, so I need to work from right to left this time. You can go either direction, but I need to work toward the yarn end. And I pull that loop off this final needle. Then I catch the next loop with my tool. So my hook is around this yarn, but my previous loop is down below the latch. That way this slides right through the first loop. So again, I put my tool inside the next loop and I slide it away from me enough so that this previous loop is down below the latch and I can pull this one through. Now if you feel insecure about pulling them off the ends of the needles, you can take the needle out as you work so that the needles come out one at a time. But with just a little practice it does speed you up to pop them off the ends of the needles. Note how I control the stitches by putting my thumb in front of them. At the end of the cast off I take the loose end and pull it through the final loop. Here is how the loop through a loop cast off looks. It provides a chain edge and it's very neat and tidy. Now what can you do if your stitches are so large that you cannot turn up the tension enough to do the loop through a loop bind off? If you turned up the tension too little and did the bind off, then the bound off edge would be all drawn up and you would be very unhappy with it because it would gather the knitting. So there are a couple of ways that you could solve this problem. One of them is to hand knit that final row of stitches. You can go ahead and one by one hand knit and get long loops. This is because you can bring the needles back farther with your fingers back beyond B position and get very loose loops. I find it helpful when I do this to occasionally stop and loosen the upper tension. Now I've got a very loose row. It's not entirely even, but it's loose. And I can even it up just by pulling things down. Then I can cut the yarn, bring my needles out into the extended hold position, and use a tool and bind them off in the same way, having hand knitted them. Now I'll finish this up and then I'm going to show you a third method of getting the same bind off. Here is that first loop through a loop bind off. Here is the second loop through a loop bind off and you can see those are identical. It's the same technique but one had a looser stitch. Now here's another way to do it. There are all kinds of situations where I use this bind off 
These are situations where I don't want to monkey with the tension. Here's a common one. Suppose I need to bind off five stitches at the beginning of the row as part of armhole shaping. That does occur. Well, logically you might say to yourself, I'm going to take this stitch and put it on this needle and then knit through the two. No, no. In fact, even some of the manuals will tell you to do that. But that is not the proper way to do a really good looking chain edge bind off with your transfer tool. Instead move the second stitch over to the first stitch. Then move them both over. Now take the yarn and knit through those two and tuck it down just a little to adjust the tension of that one loop. Then take the second stitch move it to the first needle, then bring both stitches over, and once again knit through. Now we have two empty needles, now we'll do it again. Move this one over, move them both over. It takes just a little bit more fiddling, but you get the same bind off and this is a good looking bind off. So let me get a few more of these in. Move to the edge. Move both stitches in and knit through loosely. Move the stitch over. Move both stitches in and knit this stitch through loosely. Now I'm going to get half of them bound off and then show you what happens if you do it wrong. Here's how this bind off done correctly looks. I have a nice even chain edge. Now what if I do it wrong? What if I just take the end stitch, move it over, and knit through that pair? And then take the end stitch move it over and knit through that pair. Let me do a few of these so that you can compare and I think you'll decide that it's really preferable to take that extra step to move the stitch next to the edge out and then move the two in. It just stacks them up properly for the bind off. I have too much weight so I'm reducing the weight. The first knitting machine I had actually said in the manual to do it this way, but I was very unhappy with it because I was a hand knitter and hand knitters don't have such an ugly bind off. They have that smooth chain edge. Not that there's only one way to bind off, but when they're going for that smooth chain edge, that's what they get. So this would be my last one. And I'll just cut the yarn and knit that last bit through. Let's see what we have. Over here is that chain edge that I got by moving the inner stitch out by one and then moving them both in and then knitting through. On this side, look what I have. It's like a, a series of twisted stitches with holes in between them. So I think this is a less attractive bind off. So be sure and learn this alternate for those situations where you can't loosen up and use the regular loop through a loop bind off. Here's another alternative for casting off. After you have finished your knitting, pull down a whole bunch of extra yarn. Maybe six times the width of the knitting. This is yarn that you'll be crocheting with. And then, instead of binding off at the machine, we're going to bind off later by crocheting. So I'm going to put a few rows of waste yarn on. The waste yarn works as a wonderful stitch holder so that I can crochet to cast off. 
I've cut my waste yarn and I'm dropping the work off the machine and I'm going to roll it. It rolls so that the live stitches, that is the white ones I'm going to crochet in, are nicely on the outside for me. The fun thing about crocheting to cast off is you can crochet with any stitch that you like. You could do slip stitches or you could go ahead and do single crochets in these, starting with a chain one and then just doing a single crochet in each stitch working on a cross. You can do shells or anything else you want to do, but make sure that you crochet in each loop so that you don't end up with empty loops that are going to unravel. You could do double crochets or clusters, whatever you want to do. Now one of my favorite stitches for doing a crochet cast off is to simply go the wrong direction. This is called pie crust stitch. I go under that yarn, which is my stitch next to the waist yarn, and I yarn over and bring it under like this, and then I yarn over and go through the two, and then I swing my hook under and go under the next one, yarn over and bring a loop through, yarn over and go through the two. This is so pretty, and we call it backward single crochet, or we call it pie crust stitch because it makes a very nice bumpy rolled edge along the knitting. And I'm inserting my hook front to back through the next live stitch and then yarning over and bringing a loop underneath and then yarn over and go through the two. Then yarn, go under the next one, yarn over and bring up a loop and go through the two. So it's a single crochet going in the wrong direction. If you're left-handed, you're going right to left instead of your normal left to right crochet direction. And if you're right-handed, you're going left to right instead of your normal right to left crochet direction. So I'll just finish that up, unravel the waist yarn, and you can have a look at how these stitches look. Okay, time to get this waist yarn off. Here we have that simple single crochet for a bind off on this end and then I turned it around and did the pie crust stitch on the remainder of these stitches. So just a really interesting edge and actually I like it quite well on the purl side so maybe I'd have liked it holding the knit side toward me as I did the pie crust stitch. So lots of options for you adding crochet to your knits to dress them up. Now this next sample demonstrates how to do pie crust stitch right-handed. I do recognize that most of my viewers are right-handed. So what I'm going to do is I'm working from left to right where you're used to working right to left because it's called backwards single crochet. So even though as a right-handed person you normally work right to left, you're going to do this left to right. And you take the hook and you bring it under a stitch, one of the live stitches, having a little trouble getting in it, there we go, that is in between the waist yarn. And then you yarn over and draw that loop through. Then you yarn over again and go through the both. Now let's do that again. You're sitting here with the needle in this position you bring it under and stab the next live stitch. See that live stitch that is on my hook? And then yarn over, draw through a loop, and then yarn over and draw through another loop. And you proceed in that fashion from left to right. Now what you get is this beautiful bumpy rolled stitch. It really is a wonderful stitch and makes a very nice professional looking edge on your knits.